Ever wondered how subpoenaed documents can be used across different legal proceedings? The case of Dali and Dali, number 10, can shed some light on this. In this instance, Miss Dali sought to provide subpoenaed financial documents from Westpac Banking Corporation and AD Finance to the Administrative Appeals Tribunal, Child Support, and Centrelink concerning child support proceedings. With Mr. Dali opposing the application, the crux of the issue revolves around whether subpoenaed documents can be used outside of the family court. The governing rule here is Rule 6.04 of the Federal Circuit Court and Family Court of Australia, Family Law, Rules 2021. It states that a person who inspects or copies a document in relation to a proceeding must use the document for the purpose of that proceeding only and must not disclose its contents without the court's permission. The key question here is, can these documents be used in separate proceedings within the Administrative Appeals Tribunal, Child Support and Centrelink? Let's delve deeper into the court's decision. Justice Hogan, in applying the rule to the facts of the case, had to consider whether there was an overlap between the purposes in the current proceedings in this court and those before the Administrative Appeals Tribunal. His conclusion was that there was no such overlap as child support payment issues were treated differently in each forum. In order to decide whether to grant leave for using these documents outside of their original context, Justice Hogan considered several important factors. Firstly, he looked at whether there were special circumstances at play. The concept of special circumstances is not defined strictly and can cover a range of scenarios depending on the individual case. In this instance, the special circumstances were likely tied to the nature of the financial information and its relevance to both proceedings. Secondly, Justice Hogan considered whether there was good reason for using the documents. Here, the good reason was likely linked to the fact that the financial details contained in the subpoena documents had direct bearing on both the family court proceedings and the case before the Administrative Appeals Tribunal. Finally, he considered whether releasing the documents would contribute to achieving justice in the second proceeding. Justice Hogan determined that making these documents available could potentially aid in delivering a fair and just outcome in the Administrative Appeals Tribunal proceedings. After weighing these factors, Justice Hogan granted both parties leave to use the documents produced in these proceedings for the case before the Administrative Appeals Tribunal. This decision underscores the court's ability to exercise discretion in granting leave for documents obtained through litigation to be used in separate proceedings under certain circumstances. And so, the court ruled that both parties have liberty to use subpoenaed documents for their extant proceedings in the Administrative Appeals Tribunal. What was the reasoning behind this decision, and what can we learn from this? Let's delve into the mind of the judge as he navigated the legal maze in this case. Justice Hogan was meticulous in his approach, employing a detailed reasoning process to reach his decision. He considered whether there was an overlap between the purposes of the current proceedings in this court and those before the Administrative Appeals Tribunal. After a thorough examination, he concluded that there was no such overlap as child support payment issues were considered differently in each forum. But the reasoning didn't stop there. Justice Hogan went further considering several other factors. These included whether there were special circumstances, whether the parties could show a good reason for using documents from one litigation in another, and whether releasing the documents would contribute to achieving justice in the second proceeding. It was a balancing act, a legal tightrope walk, if you will. On one hand, there was the need to respect the limitations imposed by Rule 6.04 of the Federal Circuit Court and Family Court of Australia family law, rules 2021, and the implied undertaking principle. On the other, there was a need to ensure the pursuit of justice was not hindered by these limitations. Justice Hogan also took into account that the parties involved in both litigation cases were the same and that there was a link between the subject matters in the two proceedings. He recognized the public interest in ensuring all relevant material was made available for the tribunal. So. What are the key takeaways from this case? Well, the first is that while there are strict rules regarding the use of documents obtained through litigation, courts have the discretion to grant leave for these documents to be used in separate proceedings under certain circumstances. 
The factors that influence this decision include whether there are special circumstances, whether good reason can be shown for using documents from one litigation in another, and whether releasing the documents would contribute to achieving justice in the second proceeding. Remember, while rules regarding the use of documents obtained through litigation are strict, courts have the discretion to grant leave for these documents to be used in separate proceedings under certain circumstances, and that's the key takeaway from the case of Dali and Amp Dali, No. 10. This analysis is brought to you by Flast AI. If you found it informative, please like and subscribe. See you next time.